This episode of NSFW, we are joined by Larry Smith of Smith Magazine, creator of the Six Word Memoir. And better yet, we pervert it and have a face-melting contest to find the ultimate fail war. What's a fail war? It's like a memoir, one in which you fail. 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 You'll never amount to anything. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW, episode 11, for February 10th, 2010. Six word fail wars. This episode of NSFW brought to you by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. By the way, if you're listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, what you're about to hear is unadulterated awesomeness, a Tesla coil modulated to play a song we all know and love. Check it out. But can you play this song? Because now, you know what? That would be awesome if they could play this on ye olde Tesla coil. It is an SFW, the new show, full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernets. It's my favorite show that I host online every Tuesday night on Twit Network, joined by my inimitable co-host, Justin Robert Young. Talk to me, Justin. How you doing there, boss? What's up, baby? We I'm are doing ready to great. roll on a starry Tuesday evening. A starry? I don't think it's too starry if you live, uh, you know, around Washington, D.C. or so. They have a little bit of the cloud cover and the 12 inches of snow going on. Yeah, yeah well, you know, I'll tell you what. If you don't have um, any power, you therefore can't watch this or listen to it on the podcast, then we definitely didn't spend all the pre-show making fun of you. <laughs> that definitely didn't happen. Yeah, well, I'm glad you got that worked out. And we are joined by a very special co-host this time from Smith Magazine. It is Larry Smith. How are you doing, Larry Smith? Uh, I'm good. I'm so glad that you decided to slum with us. And I and again, this is two <laughs> for two. Two major guests come on. And I'm like, thanks for coming on my little dumb horse show that I do with Justin Robert Young that nobody's ever heard of. And then you're like, oh, no, no, no. Not only do I know your show, but I dig your stuff. And so you totally, you warmed my heart is what I'm trying to say, Larry. Because you came down yeah, and saw... Totally t- uh, you tricked everyone last year at South by Southwest. Now, did you, come, did you come out to the South by Southwest panel I did, or did you see the live show with Dig Nation? No, I saw the panel. The panel, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the one. That it was it was so much fun because I got an opportunity to pretend like I sounded smart by quoting people a million times smarter than I am. And then the next night on Dignation, I like did my best to look like a total idiot who sticks nails in his eyes for a living. <laughs> so, uh, so it was actually you came to us, and actually, I guess Justin got the letter first. What was the letter first? How, explain how we got to where we are right now, Justin. Well, all of a sudden, I get a, a friendly email from Mr. Larry Smith of the Smith Magazine uh, saying that, uh, you know, I guess words getting around in uh, in certain circles that Dan Rollman was on the show. If you guys remember the uh, world record episode where we almost killed someone, that's, uh, we that's <laughs> we may or may not have uh, crossed our legal liability threshold on the Twit Network. Uh, that was went over so well with Mr. Rollman that uh, he's telling his friends, among which uh, Larry Smith, who is, of course, the father of the six-word memoir meme, which has uh, published two books and has uh, lit, lit the internet world aflame. So we're, we're bringing that to our show, and we're going to have a grand old time with it. And so, yeah, I guess it was it was actually, uh, it, it, it was you, Larry, that, that contacted us, right? How did that happen? That, well, that is true. Well, it's another victory for a long brunch line in New York City because Dan and I were getting uh, 
breakfast or whatever uh, last weekend, and we're just sort of chatting, and I'm like, what's up? What have you been up to? Because, you know, the Universal Record Database is always doing amazing things. Your show, Fallon, you know, he's got Cameron Diaz and Bunnies setting records. So he's like, you, you, you've, you've got to do NSFW. You'll love those guys. And I knew you from South by Southwest. So I sent an email, and you replied, go figure, you know. And um, – uh, there, there we are days later. That is freaking awesome. No, that is like a dream come true. Okay. So for everyone who is not hip to the, the six word memoirs thing, uh, how did that begin? What is it and how did it start? Uh, well, we had a really amazing, it started by an accident. We had, we had, uh, I had this really cute intern, um, and blonde and she had this brunette friend and, um, they were going to video blog, uh, their way around the country for the in real life project, meeting all their online friends, uh, for the first time. And, you know, VH1 was going to come and, you know, we were going to rock and roll. And on day four, their car broke down, their videographer bailed and the other one blogged that the other one's mom was being a bitch. And, uh, we were stuck with a big honking hole at Smith magazine. So given that we're not like, you know, Vanity Fair with like 40 things just waiting in the wings, we were like, we have to fill this hole tomorrow. And we had this idea kicking around of six word memoirs because there's a, there's a story. Um, Hemingway was challenged to write a six word novel in a bar bet. So the legend goes, uh, he wrote for sale, baby shoes never worn. So it's literary legend comes around here and there novel. But the idea of Smith, it's personal storytelling. There we go. Personal storytelling site. And people write, they write their memoirs on the site. Their memoirs about their exes, about meeting Dustin Hoffman in the H&M, trying on jeans or bunnies with Cameron Diaz. And uh, we're like, well, <laughs> six words, but make it a memoir, not a novel. Let's see what will happen. And so and so and this became like a regular feature. And by the way, first of all, if there's any show that comes out on Tuesday Night's Live that can uh, appreciate genius coming from last minute necessity like like having like we are not welcome home baby <laughs> or it's like everyone asked me oh yeah hemingway literary legend blah 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 and we started doing it on twitter way back in 2006 but the truth is you know we had a big hole on the that's site. right that's right i had to figure out something in a hurry uh, <laughs> otherwise fact, it was like a hole my my so, dad when you know I was... uh, there's a six-word memoir the exits were entrances in disguise in one of our books and you know that's the deal you just gotta cruise through the hole it's funny my dad growing up used to say that nothing inspires creativity like a deadline and it's like boy don't yeah. i feel that every single day well and it's great you know and occasionally you actually hit it out of the park like did you know immediately that you had a hit with the six word memoirs well, like, uh, sort of you know like the only day maybe if you're you know an obsessed like online not not like most of us you're maybe not online for a couple of hours it's thanksgiving and we launched the project the day before thanksgiving and i sort of went home and you know Ate and hung out with my family, and I'm telling them about it. And all of a sudden, my like little nine year old nephews writing them, making writing like you know funny six word memoirs about everyone at the table. And I'm like, huh, this might work. And then back in the day, if you go to smithmag.net now, you can read all the memoirs that come in, and we feature ten a day, and we make or one our favorite, and we send that out on Twitter and Facebook and all that. But back then, if you wrote a six word memoir, it just went to my email. So I checked my email the next day, and I had like a thousand emails, you know. And I was like, wow, you know, cool. Um, but that's sort of stupid for it to be sitting in my email inbox. And then we like, well, let's just stick them on the site. And then they kept coming in, coming in. And then we started sort of featuring them and, you know, curating the thing um, because there's been like 250,000 six word memoirs in about three years now. So can you do you have a few of like your favorite of the six word memoirs? Uh, because we, we were sort of obsessed with our own perverted version, which we're about to get to. But do you have some of your all time favorites of what have come into your magazine? I, I do. I mean, uh, you know, one of, one of my favorites is um, uh, Bachelor Party YouTube video, Wedding Canceled. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then this sort of corollary to that is Met Wife at Her Bachelorette Party. And, you know, like I ran into someone who's like, I actually know the guy who wrote that memoir. Um, and like, I don't know the stories. Like the backstory is unbelievable. So sometimes we, when we do live events, people come and tell their backstories. That's awesome. And does does it get better or less cool once you actually know the backstory? Is it kind of like, man, that's it? Or no, is it's, it's actually awesome. Like, so here's like a typical, we did a reading in, in Brooklyn uh, like a month ago. And so there's like a line of like a lot of people in New York are obviously sort of around in the book. So a lot of people, so there's a line of maybe 10 or 12 people to tell a backstory. So one woman comes up and her six word memoir is grandparents died before I could ask. It's like, okay, 
where you're going here with that. And it's then she proceeds to tell like this eight minute intense story about the Holocaust and they were German and the whole thing. She had submitted it via some like German font, but you know, in the book it's just printed regular. And it was like, you know, everyone's like, oh, man, I thought it was just kind of like a mellow night here, you know? And so, but unbelievable, like no one said a word for a minute. And then the next dude comes up and his six word memoir didn't require a backstory, but he just says, geez, mom, just close the door. <laughs> You know, nice. so, you know, and you know, he's 17, probably or 12, 15. Well, so, you know, that's the vibe. It's very cool. Um, I'm pretty sure we, we can say um, clitoris on um, live Internet. Of course. No, but, that, that, that was oh God, that's that's all part we of the say, Digital actually. Millennium Copyright right? Act. So here's the deal. We're in Seattle and um, we knew seven or eight people who were lined up to um, come do backstories. It was last night of the, of the tour. And this woman who's like a power user, she submitted like a thousand six word memoirs to the site. And like some people really do. Some people do one and never come back. And some are like on it every day. Do, do you feel so the need to explain Lisa, to those people like like a memoir is your one story of your life? Do you feel you're like you're like you can't have a hundred memoirs, lady? You get oh, one. Yeah, yeah, well, that, I mean, that's you what can. that's what all farmers do. They just tell their cows to stop producing. And, right. <laughs> And their their memoirs are changing like every five minutes because like it's Hormone City, you know, and so this they do. They literally do thousands, you know, uh, but, you know, other people, it's like you can do some people do it. Like, here's how I feel today. Here's my whole life. You know, but this woman leads is like, you know, the one that I had in the book is OK. But she sort of says to me as she's about to sort of go up. Um, can I can I tell a different memoir and tell a different backstory? And I'm like, I don't care. You know, do whatever you want. And so she gets up there and she first thing she says is, oh, hey, um, I didn't really know there'd be kids in the audience because there's like a, 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 a couple with a couple of like maybe a 10 year old and a six year old kid there. Um, and she's like, but nonetheless, uh, my six word memoir is the clitoris, not a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> and she proceeds to tell this basically like penthouse forum like and then he's throbbing and and she's like a great storyteller by the way it was really <laughs> well done and funny the spooge you know and you're like wow oh I, and I'm, I'm videotaping i'm like in the front row with my little flip camera and i don't know what to do um a i don't want to stop filming b do i like what's the woman with the kids doing like my co-editor rachel first last or what's she doing but i'm just frozen and filming and it's awesome it's a great story you know and so then she she gets done and you know Odd applause. And then, so fine. End of the readings, we always do like a slam where anyone in the audience can do a six word memoir. Like we just cruise through the rows, right? And it's always pretty good. And so the lady with the two kids, uh, her six word memoir was something like, glad my boys were daydreaming during yours. So, you know, ah. she was cool and it all sort of worked. But it gets weird and it gets weird on the site. And some of it's really sweet and precious. Like, uh, you know, um, a woman named Tiffany, Tiffany Schlain has a beautiful one in the new book. Um, uh, father's funeral, daughter's birth, flowers everywhere. Aww. You know, so you know it goes you like know. deep, and then there's just like I don't know. I'll pick up the book and read one. You know, herpes, really? You're fucking kidding me. You know, so um, <laughs> and under that is um, I am one of Jehovah's witnesses. So it's like found myself and lost my hair. Um, you know, it's just um, it's a whole kooky range, and you know, no one reads the book. You know, front to back, you just kind of kind of pick it up and, and this is a coffee and table kind of thing. Have, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought up that range there, Larry, because uh, we're doing the middle tonight. Uh, what we decided to do is, you know, you have this beautiful spectrum, this wide, gorgeous rainbow of all these six word memoirs. But for NSFW, we really felt that we needed to drill down a little bit and get right into the nitty gritty, the, the, Hey ma, why can't you close the door? Uh, brand. I of, think of that your sounds memoirs. like a sensible center for this show. I like it. <laughs> there we go. So we're doing six word fail wars. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, oh, you're I most like that embarrassing new story. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we figured out that you have to spell fail wars F A I L O I R S. Otherwise, it's fail wars. But, That's uh, awesome. But by the way, there's some kind of magic in the word uh, uh, memoirs where it says this is it. This is your permanent record 100 years from now that you will be viewed upon, which is kind of what makes the six word memoirs all the more hilarious uh, for being like, like uh, you know, 100 years from now, I want people to know that I was mad at my mom for not closing the door. <laughs> and it's that simple, yeah. right? So what we did was a few days uh, a few days ago being like uh, last night, I think, at midnight, Justin and I hopped on YouTube and put out a video requesting that all of our fans here at NSFW actually send us their best six-word 
fail stories, and we requested that they be true. I don't know if that necessarily happened or not. They certainly are impressive. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we suggested they be true, and, and I think a majority of them are true, having perused them a little bit this afternoon. But uh, no matter what, there's going to be a lot of fail packed in a little sentence. That's right. Tonight, That's over right. and over and over again. Did you Perfect. Did you already have a, I tried to keep myself actually pristine here. I actually, and in fact, it's not too late. If you're watching live, you can actually send in your six word fail wars to NSFW show at gmail.com. And we'll see how many we can pack in because we actually have, we actually have a couple of other extra segments we wanted to get to. But Justin, yeah. did you have a favorite that you whoa, like? Whoa, right hold on. Wait a minute. Um, we are just getting this in here, folks. Oh, uh, dude, dude. For those, yeah, sorry, uh, everybody. Uh, of course, uh, we are up in in the same in certain time zones. We're up against Lost, uh, so uh, we're bringing you Lost spoilers. Of course, uh, spoilers are already uh, over for tonight. However, uh, next week's episode, we do have Lost spoilers. Here we go. Uh, Locke enters the Mystery Temple only to discover that it contains a series of successively smaller but otherwise identical temples. Inside the smallest temple, a miniature chocolate wheelchair exists. <laughs> Hurley crawls in behind him and says, Dude, you gonna eat that? <laughs> and that is a true spoiler. That's Watch for that, I think, around episode six or seven of this season. It's gonna be pretty huge. And when you see it, you will be like, Dude, those boys at NSFW, they knew what they were <laughs> up to. Of course, yeah, that is that is from uh, Augie, uh, Augie, Augie Incredible. Augie Incredible. Augie, Augie Incredible. Uh, I tell you what, so, just to kick things off here, I'm actually, I'm going to let you pick one that you like in particular, but we got about 50 responses in the last 24 hours, and I'm going to click on one completely random. All right, I got, I got one That's here. That's the only way to do it, random. All right, well, I tell yeah. you, you, you've got one? Go for it. I got one here. Uh, this one comes from uh, Jacob Peters, who writes, last night, hottie, this morning, regret. <laughs> and then he has it so, almost as if signed, by beer goggles. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought maybe she regretted it, so it could go either way. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, yeah, it really, it is open for interpretation here. <laughs> we don't know from which angle the point of view is in this fail war. You know, that'll be great if, like, fail wars uh, uh, inspires a religion. Six, we're going to rock it on Twitter tomorrow, six word fail wars. Okay, good. We'll do, we'll do fail wars, uh, O-I-R-S. Uh, we'll, but what I love is the idea that we inspire religion and, and thousands of years from now, people are trying to interpret it like, well, I don't know. Whose regret is it? Is it his regret <laughs> or is it her regret? Let's find I, I like deeper. to think like, you know, some literary professor in a, in an Ivy League and in a tweed jacket <laughs> Now, really, to which end is this point of view? Johnson, what is your opinion? Uh, by the way, from user What a Disaster, which I'm, I'm hesitant to believe is somebody's real name, but the six words come, she asked, is it in yet? <laughs> which oh, is no. familiar. That's yes. <laughs> uh, I also want to point out, folks, uh, tonight... Uh, we do have something else that we are going to get to. I want to uh, have you ask yourself this question. Why are three of our biggest fans currently on hold, ready to kill each other for greater glory? Yeah, you can actually see. There they are. I actually, I cut over to their question marks, so I didn't get your expression until the very end. <laughs> when you when you hit that, that was very intense. Yeah, we are going to have a battle royale. People think that uh, Fail Wars is all fun and games, but it gets pretty nasty, as you're about to find out. Uh, all right, here we go. I got another, uh, I got another one. Uh, I actually yeah, have one all queued up. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, well, this is a true Fail War. Somebody did me the service of writing a fail war, a true fail war from my perspective one week ago today. Six words. Video can't freeze twice during show. <laughs> <laughs> which is not true, as we all found out, as I cratered twice live <laughs> on air, which is always. Do you have any, do you ever have any of these that just break your heart, Larry, where you see it and you're like, that's not funny? Yeah, no, a lot of them uh, break your heart. I mean, there's something like, you know, some some are kind of funny and break your heart, like ex-wife and contractor now have house, you know, <laughs> like poor dude. Sounds expensive, too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we did this teen book and it's like, um, you know, uh, bulimic, obese, not what I expected. Oh, you know? I'm like, oh, oh my God, you're that's putting terrible. it out there. I just picked a random page, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's more it's more uh, hard. It's more 
heartache than love over at the Six Word Memoir Project. So wait, what's funny is I thought we were being innovators by coming up with the fail wars, but it sounds like a lot of the memoirs are already meeting that need. No, I think yeah, that, no, yeah, it, there's it's pretty tough of out there. Horrible fails. This, <laughs> all right. Speaking of which, this is one right. from Pete Fick right here. Uh, our lips about to meet. Sneeze. <laughs> That's good. That's visual. Yeah. And I've been there. I think a lot of us have been there for that one. What do you got? All right. Here we go. This one comes from Becky. Bird? Plane? Superman? Nope. Bird. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> So there we go. Getting a little geek niche here on, on the six word fail wars. <laughs> That's a great one. I love that one. Uh, let's see. There's one. Uh, oh, man. There's one that's uh, that's actually way too uh, personal for to NSFW show for me to feel good about putting out there. Um, man. Uh, oh, here's a good one from the love book. Unfortunately, eight inches was not enough. Oh, oh. fail. Oh. Yeah, no, that one. Uh, <laughs> Boo this man! No! <laughs> White Russian's ex girlfriend threw up. There's certain themes that keep coming in. I think we're all like genuinely shocked at those moments that our bodies betray us and uh, and and ruin our our stories. Now here we There's go. This one comes six from uh, uh, a six tequila. foot twelve. Uh, uh, comes from who? Six foot twelve is the name of the submitter here. Um, first time sex, psycho faked pregnancy. Oh, which, uh, <laughs> I like this one, and I have to believe that this is a lie. I, I don't believe this one's real, but this one says pants in public, wearing man thong. <laughs> which is which again? It's like if it's if if it's true, then you're probably not the kind of person where that's like a huge, you know, uh, shocker or fail at that point. Now, now, Larry, I want you to go ahead and, and keep in mind here. We do want to crown a champion uh, at the end. So do me a favor and just keep a, a running uh, idea in your head of, of among the favorites that, that we're going to be well, reading well, off. Because right, you're going right to be our one man judge. In Seattle, the clitoris, not a Rubik's Cube, has got to be beat. Okay, so that's the standard. That's the. <laughs> I the, think that's the standard. That's the same champion boo. We need to have a new champion woo in order to tackle. And I believe you guys yeah. could do it. NSFW, if anyone can tackle the clitoris, it's going to be NSFW. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's up to you guys to send it into NSFW show at gmail.com. Uh, I like okay, it. here we go. This one, a rapid fire from Mr. John Vogel. All right. Uh, he, I'm just going to read them all off in succession, okay? All right. Um, uh, est my pants shopping for toilets. Uh, oops, that slur just slipped out. <laughs> Caught singing Britney on the bus. Boss's daughter apparently wasn't into me. Banging friends, fat sister is it charity. <laughs> Laundromat, bad time for a boner. <laughs> oh my and God. thought I could dance. I can't. <laughs> uh, okay, so for, for some that are a little less... Uh... Gratuitous. Uh, I I like this one from uh, from uh, our own Giggle Loop. Uh, fired, no employment. Un or I'm sorry, fired, no unemployment. Broke. Life's awesome. Which I think that's good and true. Because I, I don't. You, I you, don't you don't. You don't. You don't think it's fun. To, all right. Well, screw you. No. What is this? Up in the air. We're all going to talk about unemployment for an hour and a half. Uh. <laughs> I'm seeing half these here and I can't quite read them. By the way, I really feel like I, we should have gone through and filtered all these because a lot of these are really good. I love this one <laughs> from Demon 5. Once God, now Demon, F. Kuhan. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of ours. So what's been the biggest? Do you, do you get recognized for the, uh, how many books have you guys put out with the six word memoirs? Uh, we've done four books. I get recognized when I wear, like right now I'm wearing, a, I make six word memoir. We make six word memoir t-shirts. And like, I have a lot like, kind of like, you know, um, like uh Judah Freelander on 30 rock with the hats, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So like right now, can you see I'm wearing uh, our prison visitations were surprisingly romantic. Oh wow! That's one of my six word memoirs um, on from that's in the love book. Um, that one, people were like, "Dude, what's up with that?" Uh, true, longer story. Um, and um, 
Uh, you know, I have another one through spaghetti at wall. Some stuck. I have that T-shirt, uh, which is, you know, like the story of six word memoirs. And, uh, you know, so when I when I wear the T-shirts, the man, people ask, you have a conversation about them. And, you know, uh, a lot of people have heard about it. And that's fun. And over, you know, when you're at tech conferences, people know about it and things. But most of our uh, folks are like not it's not like a hyper techie site. It's like super easy to submit a six word memoir. And, well, I, I and know honestly. You 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 were talk, uh, you had mentioned that that you did some NPR interviews and that uh, and that people really there's something about the simplicity. It's like the moment you say the name of what it is you're doing, everybody gets it instantly, and that and that seems to be a big part of of what makes for success. Like the whole the book uh, uh, "Men Are from Mars, Women Are from Venus." You nobody needs to read yeah. that book. All of a sudden, you get it. You're like, I understand exactly what the book's going to say instantly, and I and I think that's got to be part of the success for six word memoirs as as well. Do, is is that what it seems yeah, like? Like, a, like anybody can do it. And if you write a bad one, just write another one. And the other thing, which is, you know, in the books, we, we put a few celebrities in there, too. So it's like, oh, dude, how cool. I mean, you know, the same book is like Frank McCourt or Sarah Silverman, you know, what is um, the so most that's, famous you know person? Sarah's got six words and like random, like, you know, random Shane Faulkner, who says just white trash living middle class, you know, like. They get six words, and, and that's kind of like the whole deal. Everyone's six words are equal. Like People, you know, dig thing. it. From each and every it's, person, it's six words. It's, we call it populism, but it's also communism, <laughs> yeah. right? So, I mean, what's right. the, what's, here, here we go, okay, uh, go uh, Brian. We, we have another one coming in from a Cohen Paulison NSFW show in Holland, 4 a.m. Stupid time zones. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry, Cohen. That's not. I a apologize. Fail. Like, uh, like that's a case where your fail war is our success war. Like we will put that yeah. up on the wall. <laughs> that the fact that you're up at 4 a.m. watching our show. But the uh, have you ever been starstruck by somebody who submitted one of them? Like it comes in and you're just like, I this can't be real, and you find out it really is. Well, look, Mario Batali, the celebrity chef, is really into six word memoirs, and he sent in like six. You know, and it's like you know, it's like something you know, it's something like you know, M Batali at gmail or something it's like dude is it really you and you know and it was and his sent in a whole bunch at like two in the morning because like he's that kind of guy and the one um uh the one that uh we put in the book is brought it to a boil often oh. which is like pretty cool yeah so uh one that's one that's uh so odd i have to assume this is true i honestly cannot fathom that any fan of nsfw would make this up and, and in fact, if this person could actually contact us and let us know whether or not it's true, this one, six words, my cell phone is Hitler's birthday. Like, at what point? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know if he's proud of that. Like, is that something that happens by accident or is that a number you request? <laughs> no, no, that, that's like, it's like a vanity nameplate. Like, you, you have to bid that's for amazing. that one. You pay extra to get Hitler's birthday <laughs> as your cell phone number. I don't even know uh, Hitler's birthday, dude. <laughs> Uh, well, it's 420, right? Thing? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Among this I audience. It's, I don't know. I've, I've been friends with enough stoners to, to know, like, I mean, they're totally high on 420. You know it's Hitler's birthday? <laughs> <laughs> I know the 420 thing. I saw one on the, coming in on, about a vacuum. Did you see that one? I yes, did. I did actually. That's What's a pretty funny? good one. That's yeah. right up there. <laughs> you want to? You want to feel that? I'm gonna I'll tell you, he's the one who's judging, Brian. You got to read it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, pen 15 into vacuum never came back. Oh, that's, uh, that's just brutal. That's a brutal mutilation brutal. of a six word fail war. But what's, uh, my, what's great is the sequel pen 15 into couch 20 buck richer. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even uh, mean? That's insane. What's that? Say it again. Yeah. yeah what does that even ma mean? That's I, just scary. I, I think he. I think he was indulging in some uh, uh, some self time and discovered by it was like, well, that's a texture. I didn't the twenty expect. had fallen and down. That's right. There's a twenty. There's twenty dollar bills down there. That's exactly. Right. That's exactly it. Here we go. I, I like this. Is like like the the Jim Belushi of uh, fail wars here. Oh, Catherine, wife's name, not Catherine. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. That's from Tony Lay. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Uh, and this one, I'll, I'll tell you what, right from, from uh, the, the jury's mouth here, I'm going to give you my own fail war. Uh, random drunk girl loves her Frodo. <laughs> uh, by the way, this one from the chat room, I love this one. Many beers, the cop didn't laugh. <laughs> yeah. Do you, uh, do you, so what is the... Like, like, um, 
I don't know. I, I would have to imagine you have to have like different ones for different categories in your mind. Like, like there's one that is like, this is the saddest one. This is the funniest one. This is the most, you know, like, wow, I'm glad that didn't happen to me one. Like, uh, like what are some of the most outstanding ones in individual categories that you've made up in your own mind for each of these? Like, you know, there's, there's great religious ones, like still trying to outrun the Baptists, you know, <laughs> um, you know, Jewish mom with no, Jewish dad, Wiccan mom, I'm effed, you know? <laughs> but, you know, by the way, things like that. Um, God, um, there's, it gets really, it gets really sad. I mean, you know, there's great technology ones. Normal person became psychotic on Twitter. Or uh, some, t a teenager wrote, Googled what he called me, ouch. You know? By the way. Like, you know, it's just tough. This is, let me explain something for the rules. The fail war should be your stories. You don't need to write our fail wars. Literally half of the stuff coming in in the chat room are all stories of NSFW's great fails. Like, for example, <laughs> like stories from my bachelor party. What was it Dancing in Fountain? Wow, bachelor party. And uh, too much beer, dump on head. <laughs> it's Kuhan and Frodo, marriage of minds. This is too much inside inside baseball, yeah, Jerry, guys. Jerry, no cry, Brian, beer eye, which like eight people saw. So, yeah, we're <laughs> definitely getting inside baseball. Uh, let me remind everybody that uh, we will reveal in but a few minutes why three of our biggest fans now sit eye to eye, ready to slice each other's throats. Hang on, let's actually. For ultimate notoriety. Let's check in with them. <laughs> guys, are you there? Are you there? Yes. Uh, all right, Tom. All right, they're back on mute. They're back on mute. <laughs> so uh, um, we're going to have a showdown. But before we have our showdown, uh, first of all, uh, anything, Larry? Any of these do anything for you? Are these, you have to have heard of so many of these by now that it takes a lot to, to make an impression on you at this point. Any of these doing anything there, for there's you? Some, there's some solid fails for sure. <laughs> the, the guy with the vacuum and, and, and you know, the, the beer goggles one that an early contender was pretty strong. What's funny is like some people aren't even trying. They're just like they're typing out words and then they just count and there's six of them. Like one of them from Jordan Stephan says, F you, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell is that? People just like to be included, you know. And then some are obviously pandering. Uh, Dr. Tiki drinks NSFW best show, <laughs> which I thought was you, pretty good. But you know, you, you sort of know you've made you sort of made it as an online community when things like this start happening. Like, like someone we get it, we get like an email, like, oh, you know what? Someone else kind of registered under my name, like they used my name as their screen name, and they're writing all these things about like, oh, uh, I am an adulterous wife, you know, husband stealing, you know. Biatch or whatever, and like you know, I'm ugly and fat. You know, it's like okay, and so so when that happens, like okay, good. You know, we're finally getting somewhere here because we're starting to find like the lunatics. So I guess we're getting bigger. See, and that's the, and that's yeah, yeah. You can well, and, them. And, and I think that, that makes you guys so much better than something like Post Secret, which I've always found very very annoying because you guys don't take yourself so seriously. And even if it is a lunatic, absolutely lying. Yeah fibbing their face off like it doesn't matter it's just a six word fail war and it doesn't really like sell itself as anything more than that it is as powerful yeah, or as silly as moving. you want to make you it know, out there's so many memoirs and people you just sort of keep moving and we don't you know we don't need to put it in a book or anything but like the best ones end up in books and and you know and the best one of the day ends up on twitter but yeah no you, you sort of keep moving and if your community wants to write six word memoirs about dogs then you know we'll make it easy for them and if they want to write about like you know the most saddest thing in their life with like their their dad dying. Well, like that's, you know, that's the way it goes. Now there has yeah. to be some part of you that taps into the fact that this is so marketable because I noticed that you have, you have the, the original book, you have the sequel, you have the, uh, the, the book of the uh, six word memoirs of love. Like, I mean, the literally how long until it's the six word memoirs of dogs or, or six? Well, not, you know, maybe, maybe not that long, but um, <laughs> here's the, here's the, the love book. Um, well, you know, Chicken Soup for the Soul is making their own dog food now, like pet food. So I would say that's not going to happen. Oh, but, my God. You know, are they um, really? Yeah, it's, you'd, be, you'd be surprised what goes on out there. But, um, you know, we're just doing, you know, we're doing, we, we just do what we do. And, and if people want to do six word memoirs on dogs, like we'll sort of let them do that. But um, <laughs> I, actually, basically... actually, by the way, funny you should say that Nicarus is uh, chiming in in the chat room with a review of that very dog food in six word fail war uh, form. 
bark, 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 rough, rough. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's just not that, that good. quick. The reads are pouring in. <laughs> oh, dude, listen, will you do it? Larry, I will plug your book. We will plug the audible version of your book. We will do whatever it takes if you will actually, when you publish, publish six word uh, dog wars or, or, or memoirs yeah. of dogs. Freaking put bark, 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 wolf, wolf on there. And, and we I mean, we're going to thank you profusely in the introduction and basically blame you if we do. But like it was mainly his idea. <laughs> and uh, he really was, you know, in a way it was it was, it was their dream. And you we're, know what? Just, we're just the, we're just the funnel. You're going to you're going to mock us now. But when that thing's flying <laughs> off the shelf at the, at the local exactly. Piggly Wiggly, you know, when in like, doubt, put a dog on a diet on, on a book cover and you'll have a hit. You yeah, know, dude, you're going to make some go. serious. There bang, we go. Dude. Uh, all right. R- real quick. Rapid fire fan. Wars, did girl in clinic impregnated her uh miss her ping pong ball trick and uh yeah uh, here we go this is an inside one for the nsfw fans hotel for dogs best picture oscar oh what's funny is i thought you were gonna say the uh, up butt coconut up butt coconut <laughs> that's, <laughs> no. that's, what, that's, what that's a pretty good eye. one uh, but, although oh. brian uh yes. we should right now since we are already i mean talking about an episode that's flying by um, we need to remind everybody that we have a new sponsor. Dude, dude, and not just any sponsor, like like the holy grail, like of all, like, it, it, first of all, you don't get to decide who wants to give your show money, right? What you do is you get to be fans of certain things, and maybe if you're lucky, there's a conjunction where a product you truly dig happens to be the one that wants to give you money, and that is exactly what happened, because who is sponsoring an SFW, Mr. Justin Robert Young? Oh, my God, Brian. It is audible.com, the clearinghouse of audiobooks. If you like to listen to uh, people talking books instead of that stupid reading thing. Oh, go, go, go on, dude. historic reading thing. No, uh, I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to call Umbridge, sir. I beg your pardon. No, I beg your pardon. No, don't. We're doing a sponsor. Okay, go we ahead. Go ahead. Dummies. Go Get ahead. on Audible. Here's okay. what you do. You go on uh, over to Audible. And uh, yeah, Brian, uh, read, read what, what we're plugging, the program. Because I know what I do, because I am actually a, a customer. But what, what do they want people to know about? All right. Well, first of all, this episode of NSFW is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of audiobooks with more than how many, Justin? 50,000 friggin' books, as well as... What? Wrong. Wrong. What? There are more than 50,000 books. 60,000 books. 60,000 books. 60,000 downloadable titles all across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For listeners of which show, Justin? You could get this one right. And SF Dubs, mother effer. <laughs> okay, NSFW Audible is offering a free book. We finally have our own free audio book that we can give to anyone who loves NSFW and wants to yes! support the show. Let me tell you, on the great list of ways to support NSFW, my favorite as a fan would be to enjoy a free audio book, right? And because you'll be doing us a favor. So if you go, there's Audible's offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out the service. One audiobook you may consider downloading is Justin. Uh, I just finished off Audible the book called I'm Dying Up Here. If you are a fan of uh, stand-up comedy at all, it tells the story of uh, uh, Jay Leno, David Letterman, uh, Richard Lewis back in the uh, late 1960s, Richard Pryor. It is about the comedy store strike. It's got everything. It is incredibly well written. I love nonfiction. And you, I mean, if you like funny people and want to hear about how funny people handle horrendously tragic things, uh, you really need to read it. I'm dying up here. Available at audible.com, which you can get for free, baby. But, but you know what? I'm going to do a reversal because normally, you know, I'm a huge fan of science fiction. I'm a huge fan of big epic fantasy and sci-fi books. I'm going to throw all that aside because I love that. I love your pick as a comedy pick because we try to be a comedy show on Twit. And so I'm going to go with a book that you all but threatened me at gunpoint you and Andrew Maine together. I remember both of you on the phone. Like, like the moment I said I hadn't read this book, you were just so disgusted. You're just like, oh, I can't even believe I'm talking to you. Get out of here. It's Steve I, I, th- I think I think I know what it is. It's Steve and Martin's. If I don't, excuse me. Steve. Martin's Born Standing Up is absolutely amazing. And it, it spoke to me personally because Steve Martin actually started off as a magician before he became a very talented uh, you know, comedian and actor and, and the whole shebang. But I uh, highly recommend the book. It's actually read by the author. And a lot of people, it's, it's hard for them 
like they want the words read by the actual author. I've actually gotten to this weird space, especially for fiction, where I want them read by professional actors. Uh, but but this one's read by the author and done beautifully well. Born Standing Up is amazing. But here is the important part. Where, pray tell, do you suppose people should go if they want their free audiobook? Uh, you should read that because I don't have that email in front of me. Ah, you're killing me. It's audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. Audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. We got our own URL. Just get on down there. And then you, and every time, look, little, if we put the show on pause for a second. They notice. They pay attention who goes where and when and how. And next time it comes to writing checks, they know which shows get them results and which ones don't. We want to be one of the shows, and we've said this from the beginning, we want to be one of those shows on Twit that gets results because we know you guys are committed to the show, and we know that you can take advantage. I mean, it's it, sign up, listen to a free audio book, and that's it. And, you, and your commitment to us and NSFW is over. I can't imagine what would, be, what would make a better deal. Yeah, let me just say this, guys. Uh, this is a product that me and Brian have been fans of forever. I actually started my Audible subscription listening to Mac Break Weekly. I finally no listened to him talk about it enough that I went on and I used the, the code. And I got my free book, and I've been there ever since. You should do it. Me and Brian love it. You will love it, too. Uh, that is audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. All right. So, uh, by the way, do, do you do the audiobook thing at all, Larry? You do the audiobooks? You know, it's funny. I just got Born Standing Up as an old-fashioned print book, um, which now I guess I'll read. Uh, because I haven't <laughs> so yet. you haven't started but, no, yet. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to audiopodcast.com and uh, get it uh, Audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. Yeah. 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 Audible, you know, I know, Audible is amazing. They've been around a long time. They actually are really cool. Yeah. Well, and, and you will enjoy Born Standing Up. It's it's phenomenal, yeah. and it's it's one of those where you can tell when somebody's letting down their guard and actually just telling you the story of their life as they lived it. Uh, highly, highly recommend it. And we just uh, actually started a little six-word memoir podcast. It's one of the shorter podcasts. We just do six six-word memoirs a day, and it's off of smithmag.net, and you can subscribe to it, iTunes and all that. It's just like – you know, reading them, six words, it's sort of fun. They're all about love and heartbreak this month because of Valentine's Day. So, um, so we're so, not too good to tie into national holidays. Every, no, no, no. Yeah, that's wait, what we're talking about, cha-ching. You just wait for the NSFW <laughs> holiday special. We're going to be we're gonna be uh, pouring okay. our love all over the place. It's going to be on oh, ice. <laughs> so, so tell me, uh, and by the way, this is a good idea. So, so you're doing a one minute a day podcast in the vein of like a 60 second science from science of scientific American, one of those things. Yeah, totally. It's just six, six word memoirs, uh, read by two people. They're all real from the site and things. And it's just, you know, it's just short and like, you're just going up the elevator, like just listen to it. You know, I tell you, you know, I have a number of those podcasts, uh, uh scientific American is one of them. And, um, uh, uh, the Onion Radio News is another one of them, and I'll save up like seven or eight of them, and then just listen to them all in a row, straight straight through. So I'd imagine yeah, that I'm would do. Po it. I'm positive that if you go and like listen to six word memoirs, or just catch a couple of day on this site, they're like so good. These little kooky little bits or like sad little bits of humanity that are kind of pouring out us, and we curate them so you just get the you know the best ones are really obvious. Uh, it's it's good stuff, you know. It's like we have a lot of fun, but it's like the six word memoirs, people kind of they get really into it, they get addicted to it. And and um, it's and the fail wars is the next big thing. Of course, hey, I'll tell you what, uh, Larry, you were looking for something to beat your uh, your your, your six word memoir that uh, the clitoris. It's not a Rubik's cube. I think we at least have a sequel to that that has come in uh, to our uh, our Gmail here. This one is from David Clark. Rubik's cube solved. Clitoris. <laughs> I think we, we I think we have to give it to him. Yes. Wait. So what am I? Am I hearing that right? No, I'm not going to stand up. But the point is, we do have a winner, though. That's all I cared about is that we actually. So we got one. Are we? Can we declare it the winner of the chat rooms and so and move on to our our big our big death match? I'll tell you what, you we'll leave it open because the, things the are still check, pouring you know, in at a rapid pace. So any last minute check. entries, send them in now. But we are going to do our deathmatch contest right now. Okay, but 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 the important thing is is to check with Larry. Larry, we do have at least one that you're willing to crown like winner of our first round of, of Fail Wars the, competition. The, the judges are good with it. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay, well, look, last minute in the chat room if you want to throw those in. By the way, this is a good time to remind everyone because a lot of, the vast majority of people listen to the show instead of watching it live. 
I hope you have a great time, and I suspect you, a lot of you do because uh, judging from the letters I get from you guys, but highly recommend you try joining us live sometime Tuesday nights at nsfwshow.com or live.twit.tv. It's a little bit of a different experience, and you'll see why. What are we doing now, Mr. Justin Robert Young? Well, we are going to play a little game. We have three of our uh, best fans that were in the live uh, pre-show. We pulled them out of the audience, so to speak, metaphorically, and what we're going to do is Larry... Uh, we're going to ask you to please give us a word. A random that our, word. Yeah, that our our, uh, our contestants are going to have to work into a six-word memoir uh, on the fly. So and, they're all going to go, and then we're going we're gonna to crown a, uh, uh, a champion. And first of all, let me make it clear. This is, uh, lest anyone think that we're just, you know, horse appling around, uh, that the, uh, boy, that, that, re that really doesn't translate into that proper use of it. Just horsing around. Uh, we really want to believe that whatever these memoirs are, that they're actually true. So if we ask you if it's true, the answer is yes. Second of all, uh, when, uh, literally, this is a case where, I, I, in my mind, I'd like to think of NSFW as some big fancy club, you know, Studios 54, everyone wants to get into, and they're waiting behind the velvet rope, and what happens right before the show? Well, Justin and Brian come walking out, wearing our Armani sunglasses, and all of the photographs are being taken, and we're just like, what's up? We don't really notice any of the little people. And we point to three random people out of the crowd and say, you kids. Come with us. And in my mind, I'd like to think we totally made their day. And in this case, it is Chris, Slightly Used, and The Culprit, which uh, none of those are their real names. I, I tweaked all their names. Gentlemen, are you guys on the line here? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yep. good. We have your SG. That's right. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we have all three of you on the line here. Are you familiar with the rules as to what you're about to participate in? No. Yes. Okay. No. Yeah, familiar. Not confident, though. <laughs> okay, familiar but not confident. Justin, do you want to reiterate for these gentlemen exactly what I, the I, I, I have uh, something I want to ask. How about the winner of uh, this the Battle Royale gets a Twitter plug on here? On on NSFW? All right. Sure. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah, we can do that. That's a good prize. We can do that. All right. All right, here, here's the deal. Larry uh, Smith of smithmag.net is uh, coming up with a word here that uh, he's going to give us. As soon as he does, you guys will be charged with working it into a six-word memoir about your life. And All it right, better be Larry, true, or at least you better tell us it's true. Please, please make it true. Larry, can you please give us the word? <laughs> the word is furry. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live here in the first Go! Annual. Go, children! Furry is your word! We're Write your six-word memoir! Okay, and so, and first people, somebody just chime in. We'll have a secret code word. The secret code word will be, Brian, I'm ready to give my six-word <laughs> memoir. Are you sure it's not Sam Shoe? Oh, yeah. I, I, hey, listen, who's the host of this show? What are you doing? By the way, yes, that's a good point. Uh, here Sam's we go, cool. falling in line. Uh, our good friend Peter uh, Fick writes in, uh, Audible Audiobooks, sex for your ears. <laughs> Audible Brian, Audiobooks, sex ready. for your ears. I am all right, all who's right. ready? Who are the first? Who's ready? Oh, I'm totally ready. We're all ready. Who's we're okay? Ready. Well, I tell you what, we're gonna begin in reverse uh, order that I called them. The culprit two four one. What is your six word fail war? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me fix this. Let me get everything. All right. What is your <laughs> six word what six word fail war? <laughs> Went to pet store, furry bastard. Wow. All right. That's the, that's the culprit. Larry, what are you feeling? You feeling anything so far? It's a very sweet story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, I don't want to, I don't want to break your heart, the culprit, but when our co-host can't even, can't even say it with a straight face, that's not looking good for you, dude, for what that's worth. <laughs> All right. Slightly used. What is your six word fail war? Furry chest hair. Lather that soap. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, keep in mind, Larry, this is a fail war. Which, what do you Was think? Was he talking about her himself? That's the question. <laughs> oh, you know what? He should have if asked it's her. Us. It's really a fail, but um, I like that. Okay, good. All right. Well, all right. And lastly, that sounded like a fail to me. No, no. All right. Chris, Chris, last one. Are, Are you ready? Right. Chris. Saw Brian's mom's furry last night. 
Oh. oh. <laughs> That's not true. What? Did you just... <laughs> Did you just make a reference to my mom? Yeah, was no, the last minute your mom And joked. it was true. Nobody suspects the last minute your mom joke. <laughs> <laughs> Penelope Ray Brushin, what are you saying about this? G T F L. Oh my God. I can't believe what I just heard. That's not just uh, Larry, yell, that's the yell official yell judge. What do you think? Judge? The moms have it. Oh no! He gives it to my mom! <laughs> no! I can't I hate it. brother out. A really good fail war. Oh my god, it was a fail war on me. I'm the failure. I can't believe it's meta. It. It's meta. It's good. It's live, oh. live. It's live net. It's how did meta. you how does it feel, Brian, to go your entire life and, and <laughs> not realize you in fact were the failure? <laughs> you know what? I'd hate I had always su suspected. This is like finding out that you're gay. It's like, you know, I always thought. <laughs> I always thought that I was the failure here. <laughs> and I'm glad to finally know for certain. And now if I could just come out to my mom and say, guess what, mom? I'm right. the fail war. Uh, winner, winner, what's your what's your Twitter? Uh, my Twitter is at Chris Penny. It's P-E-N-N-E-Y. At Chris Penny. Listen, if you love people who, who make jokes about my mother... <laughs> then I highly <laughs> recommend that you follow Chris Penny on Twitter. <laughs> all right, that is at Chris Penny, P-E-N-N-E-Y. Uh, now all of you kids, scram. Uh, hey, real quick, I don't know if a bunch of people in the chat room are requesting Justin. They said that what they'd really like to be doing is watching TV, but not watching TV, what's on right now. What they want to do is watch TV in the future, but I told them that's not possible. They say, we just want to know oh, what happens. Oh, Brian! We are getting a new Lost spoiler in, ladies and gentlemen, of course, for Lost Boy, Augie Incredible, uh, sending in spoilers for future episodes of Lost. Jacob's Cabin continues, uh, or contains the name Teak Animation Cell, linking the island steering column to Steamboat Willie. <laughs> <laughs> I and I, oh, one more, we have one more coming in. Oh. Miles talks to a ghost who tells him that the Dharma Initiative is an anagram for uh, Mania Varied. Hit it. What does it mean, Miles asks. Mean, replies the ghost. It means I'm dead, and the only thing left for me to do are watch guys masturbate and make up anagrams. Where's your thump at the end? You got to do the thump at the end. <laughs> By the way, in that context, I'm not so comfortable with that thump at the end. I don't have to stop at the end anymore. <laughs> so there we go. And I also want to point, uh, plug uh, that uh, all the uh, Lost Spoilers will be tweeted out throughout the week at at Finn Fizzler on Twitter. That is at F-I-N-F-I-Z-Z-L-E-R on Twitter. All right, so uh, so for yeah. all your Lost Spoilers, go ahead and check that out. Which, by the way, I think I think we're all caught up. We've told all the big stories for the rest of the, uh, the season, right? I mean, there's nothing left. There's nothing left for us to expose, right? No. You or never know. Augie Incredible, he, he digs out the scoop. All right. All um, right. Now, uh, also, uh, uh, real quick before, because uh, we'll hopefully we'll go through a few more um, fail wars before we wrap up uh, this episode. But I do want to tell a very, very, very quick story. Uh, I was at the Super Bowl last Sunday uh, at a big party for the Saints, uh, friends and family. But uh, part of that, and I was in uniform because I was technically working it. So, I mean, I don't know. Don't break my balls here. I, I do. Um, what? Brian, were you confused? What? No, yeah, I'm just confused because I didn't know you had anything to do with the Saints. It doesn't seem like something you would be a part of. I, I mean, mean I know you know, it wasn't so much, you know, me at the party as I was, I was hired to kind of help them move people. And but, I mean, I that's even more weird because it's like, I I mean, we're friends. And if you got a big gig like that, I would think that you would actually contact me. I mean, but yeah, well, actually, I wasn't so much like entertaining. I was kind of just holding a sign so they knew how to get back to the bus. Um but anyway, no matter that, while uh, while I was there, I was watching as uh, uh, Kendra Wilkinson of, of Girls Next Door walks out. Or she is the husband of Hank Basket, who for sports fans muffed the big onside kick and maybe lost the game for the Indianapolis Colts. But while I was there, I, I cheered her up. She's being a yeah, big paparazzi scrum. And I, I performed a magic trick. Uh, that is uh, Bob the Psychic Cockroach. Now, wait a minute. Bill this is this is totally weird to me, Justin, because, like, first of all, this is the kind of thing I, I mean, I know you, and this is the kind of thing that seems like you would call me within seconds after it happened. And then, and second of all, how odd, like, like Bob the Psychic Cockroach is made by our friend Andrew Maine, who co-hosts the Weird Things podcast with us. And it's very peculiar that uh, that that this is the trick that you showed her. 
What, well, what? you know, uh, I'll tell you what, Brian. I, I, it was I had to show her because it's so gosh darn easy to do. And you can go ahead and pick it up at uh, you know, just search for Psychic uh, Roach on iTunes. It's only a buck. It's very very easy to do, and it is uh, it is hilarious. So by the uh, way, I would favor. I would give I would give I will give Andrew a hundred dollars if he makes an alternate version of it where it's Bob the Psychic Roach and it's like a half smoked marijuana cigarette that 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 goes goes around <laughs> and saves the day. <laughs> Has the same like kind of voice and everything. Yeah, uh, exactly. Right. Do me a favor, folks. Uh, I'm going to be giving away, or Andrew has been nice enough to give away ten free uh, versions of this dollar app. All you have to do is just uh, at reply the NSFW show Twitter with. Uh, or actually, no, we'll, we'll have the email, right? Yeah, yeah we're no, I say at reply. Let's do it in public. At reply at nsfwshow.com. Uh, or I'm sorry, NSFW show. But but what do we want to have them do? Just we're going to pick it randomly. No, we're going to have you write a little, uh, I'll tell you what, how about we do a six-word memoir about the psychic cockroach uh, and just uh, just make sure you tag it psychic pound, t- psychic roach uh, on Twitter. Well, and, I mean, uh, we'll read it if it's if at I NSFW. Tell- Look, let's not, let's not fake anything here, right? It's like the show ends. What do we do? We sit here for the next 30 minutes and we, we incessantly hit re, refresh on Twitter. And the moment anything says anyone, like it's a race to see which of us could call each other and be like, did you hear what Mizzoula said? He said, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we are such sad, sad people. So we read everything. But in this case, if you want to do psychic cock or psychic roach. Just roach. Yeah, psychic psychic roach. roach. It's Twitter. We got to conserve. Uh, yeah. Well, stuff yeah. So, okay. So, psychic roach, and then yeah. your six word your six word memoir for Bob the psychic cockroach, and you will get a free copy of Bob the psychic cockroach. Yeah, we're that? gonna give away ten. We'll probably give away two or three uh, or four or five here at the after show. And then, uh, if you are listening to this on podcast, don't think that they are all gone away. We won't give away the last until the next NSFW show. So, uh, do me a favor and uh, write it up. It's a fantastic app. And if you don't want to go through all this, it's a buck, you cheap bastards. Yeah, that's go true. Go on over to iTunes and pick it up. I wouldn't do it. I would just buy the damn thing. In fact, I did. Literally, I don't know if I told you this, Justin, but literally, Andrew was like, hey, man, I wrote this app. It's really good. Here's a code so that you can use it for free. And I'm just like, a code? I don't even know how to use a code for an app on the <laughs> iTunes store. It's like it's 99 cents, so I just, I just bought it for 99 cents so that I could try it. Okay, listen, here's the important thing, Larry. We do a little thing we like to call uh, rapid fire, and it's an opportunity for you to be as fast and as honest as you feel like being live on the air, unleashed by the chat room. The chat room will give you a series of either or questions. You will read aloud the either or options, for example, black or white, and you'll say white, and then we'll all shout racist. But what we'd like you to do is say either, you know, blank or blank, and then say blank, and very briefly in five words or less, or you know what, for you, Six words or less. I thought that was coming, yeah. Six words or less. <laughs> Explain why that's the case. Are you down for it, man? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is go time for Rapid Fire with the founder of Six Word Memoirs, Larry Smith, and we are go. All right, what do you got? Uh, uh, uh what's some cocker? No, uh, it's don't. moving too fast. Uh, Veronica or uh, the other one? <laughs> Veronica or Belmont? Uh, Veronica, because blondes are fun. Six words are full story. Six words, much easier to do. Um, balls or balls? Balls. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of Veronica. Ra- no. <laughs> Hookers or Coke? Um, Depends what order. Uh, iPhone or Android? Never used an Android. Hook. Uh, <laughs> Online. <yeah. laughs> by the way, dirty over there. By the way, we forgot. Or right boob. Try them both quickly. Rubik's cube or no? Yeah, Rick. Uh, <laughs> it's a very nasty little trap room you had. In there. I'm sorry, dude. Tampon. They're not normally this bad. Oh, I patterned. I patterned tampon. Uh, iPad still in beta. I don't know if that's six or not. Um, yeah, I can't even read any. <laughs> that's all right. That's you know what? That's probably for the best. I can't. Uh, no, I am shocked. That is fine. They know both. We bring out the, the worst in people. That's that's all right. No, that's all right. Hey, what do you want to let's this talk about the fail war? 
let's say people dig uh, the the six the six word memoirs idea and they want to participate or 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 consume more of this media where can they go larry so smithmag.net and uh at smithmag on twitter and if you buy this book six uh, it all changed in an instant more six word memoirs then you'll have something to give someone which is you know a nice thing but yeah go to smithmag.net and submit your fail wars your memoirs your mom wars whatever you like D oh mom wars that's a great <laughs> one listen six word hot mom wars i want credit for fail wars and i want credit for dog wars those are the two big you got ones it. that's okay good. you got it good 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 second of all um uh by the way shame on you chat room i'm so shocked that we actually allowed you to talk <laughs> oh to my god shame chat room way to act so completely out of character <laughs> and embarrass our guests with your filthy mind <laughs> uh, by the way, don't forget uh, uh, audiblepodcast.com slash NSFW. That's a new deal. We got to show them that they are worthy of, uh, of of our love. And what do you got for us, Just Robert Young? You got anything to promote? Uh, yeah, I got a few fail walks before we uh, hit the road. Valentine's Day, $100 spent, just friends. Uh, water <laughs> glass full of vodka. I forget. Uh, two years wooing, passed out drunk. <laughs> and finally, she warned me. They'd arrest me. Uh, there we go. Those See, are, uh, that's one of those I just don't believe. I wish I wish it was a little more real for that. Uh, by the way, real quick, uh, I know that you are doing uh, the weirdthings.com and, of course, the weirdthings.com podcast. A new episode coming out any minute? Indeed, yeah. Uh, we have the new Weird Things podcast, which is, of course, uh, hosted by me, Brian Brushwood, and Andrew Main, the, uh, of course, the creator of uh, Bob the Second Cockroach and a genius on so many levels. Uh, my day... Gig is uh, itrix.com. Uh, all the magic industry news you could possibly want, as well as podcasts. And follow me on Twitter, Justin R. Young on uh, Twitter. But really, the big, big, big deal, get a free copy of Bob the Second Cockroach by at or blank NSFW show on Twitter with your six-word memoirs about the psychic cockroach and just hashtag that bad boy, psychic roach. Can I do uh can I do something that I swore that we wouldn't do? <clears throat> like like we wanted to be a show that's about uh that's about uh I guess gamer culture without being about games, but there's one game I got to talk about. It is so unbelievably good and this is from the bottom of my heart. This is no uh I've been playing Mass Effect 2 and I know I you you don't play a lot of video games unless they're sports video I games. I play right? them all the time. Yeah. You play, okay, well listen. Freaking Mass Effect 2 is the real deal. Anyone who hasn't been playing it, it is far and away the most engrossing the most uh, amazingly immersive science fiction video game experience I've ever had in my entire life. Literally, I just wanted to get the levels over with so I could listen to more of the dialogue, which never happens to me in a video game. It was absolutely phenomenal. Highly recommend Mass Effect 2. But that's going to be it. Uh, I'm, I'm at Schwood. And uh, next week, we're going to be on the road. I'm going to be live from Boston, Massachusetts. And can we go ahead and tease our South by Southwest idea? Can we talk about that real quick? Um, let's just say it's highly likely that I might not be in Florida for South by Southwest. You have, you still haven't bought your tickets, have you? I haven't bought my tickets. Oh, come on, dude. Buy the ticket. I gave you the link. I found it. They're only $105 each way right now. Listen, here's what we're thinking, right? Here's what I'm thinking. Imagine this. Crazy idea. I haven't even talked to Leo about this at all. It's up to you guys to tell him whether or not you think this would be a good idea. As far as I know... Twit's not coming out to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Oh, guess what? I happen to live in Austin, Texas, and happen to have a little bit of a studio all set up, ready to go to broadcast whatever we want, whenever and however. So, nutty idea. What if Brian Brushwood, Justin Robert Young, Brett Rounceville, a.k.a. the Amtracker, Owen J.J. Stone, a.k.a. O'Doctor, and whoever else wanted to come, all lived in my house we all went, experienced South by Southwest. We recorded interviews with people. And we came back here and we reported every night live from like 11 p.m. till 3 a.m. And gave you like the live experience of exactly what's happening from South by Southwest Interactive here in Austin, Texas. And judging from the responses, the chat room clearly hates it. They clearly hate the idea. <laughs> they think there's nothing that good that, good that could come of this at, at all. So uh, that's what I'm working on. I got to talk to Leo about that and see if he's down for that. But regardless, even if we can't, even if we can't do it through Twit, we'll just do it live uh, on UStream. Make sure, make sure to follow at Schwood and at Justin R Young. And do, do you have a Twitter? Do you pimp your Twitter at all, Larry? Yeah, it's at Smith Mag. 
at Smith it's Mag. Good. At Smith Mag, that's simple. And we're going to do Six Word uh, Fat Wars tomorrow, and I'm going to see you in Austin in like a month. Dude, maybe you could come out and hang out in studio. We'll see if we can make it. I'll just pull up my sleeping bag. It's going to be good. This chair is here for you, rock star. <laughs> All right, dude. Hey, dude. seriously, can't thank you enough, Larry. So glad you made it onto the show. Had a freaking blast. We'll hang around a little bit for the after show. Don't forget, Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern is where yeah, you... Yeah, and by the way, well, one more plug. Remember uh, uh, for uh, bringing Brian's mom's muff onto our airwaves at Chris <laughs> Penny with an E at the end. Ugh. E and an E-Y on Twitter. I can't believe you. I can't believe you gave him a plug. Screw that. <laughs> I'm out of here. Take care, guys. NSFW, FTM, FW. See you next, See you next Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> I forgot to. You said it before I could.